That's what he's studying. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wow. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> That's a lot of. I know. You could blow something up. <laughs> That's what he likes to do, I think. <laughs> Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for being here. Um, so you have 20 minutes, and um, you have three minutes for an opening and two minutes for a close, and you may proceed when you're ready. Oh, okay. Um, well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for this opportunity and for inviting me down for an interview. Um, I'm excited about this because, you know, for me, being an appellate judge is sort of um, where I feel like I'm destined to end up. I, I'm, I'm really... Well, for one thing, I'm really a student of the law, um, and that may be something that doesn't come out completely from my resume, which I think shows a very sort of varied um, amount of legal experience in different areas, uh, with much of which has been in appellate practice and much of which has been with both judges and litigators who are renowned not only in Florida but nationally, and it's really made me realize that, that appellate practice and appellate law is really where my passion is and that I just am very, very um, interested and intrigued by the application of law to facts, stare decisis, rules of construction, um, the process of judicial opinion writing, which I've, I've been fortunate enough to get to know intimately um, from working with an appellate judge and also working with appellate litigators as well. Um, so I, I just feel like everything on my resume has sort of led me here. I, I think I've been fortunate enough since law school to um, do what a lot of law students do, which is go to a, a going to litigation, <coughs> commercial lit litigation at a very well-renowned law firm. But then I've been very lucky to find, um, I'll call it a niche for lack of a better word, but my area of law that I am most excited about and most passionate about, which is appellate practice. So um, I, it, the, the time is right for me. I think I, I, I think my experience is, has led me here, and, and this is absolutely where I want to end up. So I, I, again, I thank everybody for having me. Thank you. Um, uh, I spoke to people who, who reiterate uh, that you are scholarly and, and have had this varied interest, learned a lot about how the Jacksonville office is set up um, in terms of the kind of cases you handle. It's quite a large office and, and varied responsibilities. Um, what wasn't clear to me from, um, you know, maybe from as far back as your time with the Solicitor General's office was your judicial philosophy. Could you speak to that a little? Sure. Um, I, so I guess I sort of alluded to it a moment ago. My, my judicial philosophy, especially when it comes to um, what I would call sort of intermediate appellate courts in, in the state of Florida, which is, as you all know, is a unique state. Most states don't really have this kind of setup. Is that you're you're here as a judge to decide a case based on a record that is presented to you, but also based on you know how does this fit in with sort of the puzzle of the existing law in the state of Florida. You're not there to make law, you're not there to pronounce law, but you are there to decide a case that fits into the legal landscape in the state of Florida. That's the way I view it. Now, if you are presented with a case of first impression, obviously you have to make a decision as far as um, you know how you, think, how you think the law would best fit in with the other sort of branches of law. Um, and, and, and fit in and be implied overall statewide because ultimately your decision, the panel's decision in any appellate court, if it is the only decision, and there's no Florida Supreme Court decision, is really going to be applied statewide and is almost the law statewide. So it's important to, to always be co cognizant of stare decisis, always be co cognizant of um, where the law is in other areas and how what your decision, how your decision making is going to fit into that before you actually make a decision. Um, well, let me ask you, what if the case doesn't fit? I mean, d does stare decisis necessarily mean that if everything has been decided correctly? In other words, what would you do if the case law behind you is incorrect? I mean, I, I think if you are in a position as a judge to, um, you know, to have the power and authority to analyze that and to maybe go in a different direction, there are certainly roadsides and indicators as to when stare decisis may be should not be applied. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court obviously has numerous and numerous cases talked about these kinds of things where it just has proved unworkable over time, has proved to not be um, consistent with you know changing times and principles and the way society has evolved. Obviously, 
If that were not the case, we, you know, we'd still have cases like Plessy versus Ferguson. I mean, obviously there are reasons why um, stare decisis doesn't always apply, but you look for those signposts. You look for, for a reason to do that. You don't, you don't sort of do it in, in, in any sort of personal interest or bias or any sort of um, in, in interest in sort of getting out front of something when it's not necessary, when it's, you know, when it, it could potentially be disruptive. So you look for those signs as to when a change might need to be made, and then ultimately it may be the highest court in the state that gets to ultimately decide what direction to go in. Thank you. Uh, apparently the city of Jacksonville is a large office, right? Yes. Do you have a specific specialty that you spend most of your time on? I, I am in what, it, it, the broader department that I'm in is litigation. That, that um, comprises kind of lawyers that do different types of litigation. They're sort of tort lawyers, personal injury types. I'm in what is mostly called general commercial litigation. So it's a lot of the larger commercial cases, construction cases, um, civil rights cases, um, lots of federal court practice. And um, while they don't have a designated deputy or chief for appellate practice anymore, I've been fortunate over the last couple of years that pretty much all the appeals in the, in the general civil area come to me. Um, I just had an argument yesterday at the first district. So, so I, it, it's been great. Um, um, one of the things I was a little worried about when I first joined the office was the first, one of the first things I did was like that for was cert, certified in appellate practice. And I was a little worried that, you know, because I'm doing a lot of cases, am I going to be able to keep this? Am I going to get enough appellate work to keep the 30, 40 percent you need to have that? I've been lucky that I have been able to. So, you know, uh, civil li litigation generally, but also a lot of appellate practice. Okay. I just thought maybe you did real estate. Yeah, yeah. Sure. There is that, too. There's, there's everything. Um, I see that you applied for the first DCA I twice. Um, what was the result of that? What did you learn from that? And why are you now applying for the fifth DCA? And what are your ties to this area? Okay. First part of the question, uh, loved it. It was a great experience. I'll be, to be frank, I think both times that I interviewed with the JNC over in Tallahassee, um, you know, one was, one re re resulted in a close friend and colleague of mine who used to be the Solicitor General getting appointed as first DCA. And then the, the second time was the current Solicitor General getting applied to the first CCA, who was also a colleague of mine. So it was disappointing, but also not, not too, I, I didn't feel too bad about it because I, you know, obviously I love both of them. Um, as far as, but I, you know, and I also learned a lot about sort of the types of things that, that, that the JNC was looking for in terms of what an intermediate appellate law judge should be. As far as my ties to this area, um, Currently, my family lives about a mile and a half inside Duval County. Um, we are moving to St. John's County. My wife has been a teacher there, a high school teacher there in Ponte Vedra Beach for about 10 years. Uh, both of my children go to school down there. Um, so we are definitely moving into the district and it's where we want to be. We, we, we need a bigger place and, and a place that's closer to where we sort of work. So. I noticed from your application, it looks like uh, seven different places of employment since uh, I guess you, your first lawyer for the job as a, as a lawyer was in 99. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us an insight as to how that's happened. How that's <laughs> happened, all the different moving around from place yeah. to place to place, as opposed to maybe some sure. some more stability. Sure. And uh, well, whether or not, yeah. you know, this move that you want on the appellate court is just another among the seven moves that you've made in the last 10 years. I understood. Um, obviously, two of those, I'll start out by saying, were law clerk positions. Obviously, those are by nature temporary. But you were a lawyer at that point. I was, right? I was already a lawyer at Helena Knight when I was about three and a half years in and Judge Moore in the Middle District um, contacted me and, and his law clerk at the time was coming to Helena Knight because he was completing his term. And so I talked with everybody at Helena Knight and said, maybe we can switch places. You know, he can come to Helena Knight. I've always wanted to clerk for a judge. And it worked out for them and it worked out for me. And at, at the time, the idea was for me to come back. Now, now once I did three years with Judge Moore, um, they, you know, as law firms sometimes do, they just didn't have a position waiting for me at the time. Um, so I was 
fortunate enough to get another clerkship with Judge Chofi, which only, as you know, only lasts for a year. Um, and then from there, I went to, I, you know, from there, I, once that naturally expired, I went to um, teach law school at Florida Coastal. And love, I mean, just, I've been an adjunct teacher since 2001 or 2001. Um, I'm still doing, your application it's down under the teaching experience okay. instead of the rent as opposed to employment, just sort of naturally fit there. Um, but that's that's sort of, if, if you saw a hole, that's what that was. And um, loved that and probably would have stayed there had it not been for the, my colleague Scott Makar, who I mentioned a minute ago, becoming the Solicitor General in Tallahassee and giving me an opportunity. You know, he, he when he went in there, he had no staff at all and he had uh, five staff to to hire, and I was close with him, and I was one of the first calls he made, and he said, would you be interested in coming back into practice and doing some appellate law? And again, loved, I loved where I was, but, you know, sort of a, as destiny would have it, that's where my sort of appellate practice really began, was there. Um, once I was there for about three and a half years, and, you know, tried on several occasions um, to move to Tallahassee from Jacksonville, and during 2007, 2008, so you can imagine what the housing market was like in Jacksonville. It didn't happen. So I was essentially commuting three hours um, from Jacksonville to Tallahassee for that job, and it just became a little bit too much of a strain. Once my kids got into school, they were young when I first took the job. Um, and so I decided I needed to come back to town and be closer, be, be home. Um, and as it turns out, there was, a, you know, the, the attorney general election was going on. It was kind of, the time was kind of right. I'd sort of done a lot at that job. So I went back into private practice and um, again, probably would still be there had it not been for a colleague of mine at the city of Jacksonville calling me up and really wanting, and I'd been talking to them for years, really wanting me to come in and do appellate work um, with the city of Jacksonville, which was something I really, at the time, really wasn't doing and wanted to continue doing. So that's sort of a brief explanation of my history. Yeah, thank you. How many oral arguments did you do? As a solicitor general, I would say, I would say probably 15 to 20. I can't think of the exact number, somewhere in that range. And since since I've been at the city, I've done, um, I think I've done four panel arguments, and then, and then we, we, we do a lot of administrative law stuff, as you can probably have imagined, and that's appellate work, I mean, petition work. So some of those are oral arguments as well, but they're just not panel oral arguments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who do you root for when the Spartans play uh, the Gators? I like that question. That that one is. But it depends on the answer whether it's the Gators. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the Michigan. Very, <laughs> very. Uh, I've been fortunate. Very rarely lately has that happened. The last time I really remember it happening was around to the 2000 range because it happened in both basketball and football. And in the basketball game, I know. Yeah, in the <laughs> basketball game, I'm just going to be honest, I love Tom Izzo. Um, so, and, uh, so that's who I root for. I loved that team that year. Um, and I figured Billy would be back, so, and he has been. So in the football game, I rooted for the Gators that year just because I love that, love that team. Um, so it just depends. Yeah, it was so much. It's a fun question. It, 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 good, good question is this, though. What do you perceive to be the greatest need to DCA, this one, this DCA? Well, you know, obviously, um, the, the resources of this court are, are down, and that's why it's getting another position, which I think is a good thing. Um, I, I think that, the, from what I know of the, of the appellate courts in Florida, they're, they're just getting nothing but busier. So I, I think they, they need some more... Um, qualified and experienced um, legal and appellate minds um, on this court, just like a lot of other courts around the state. So I think it has that same need. Do you think there's a greater need on the civil side versus the criminal side here, or vice versa? Um, I, I, you know, again, judging by what I know, I think a lot of courts need a lot of the cr criminal side of things almost more than anything else. I think this looks like the Albanese and the Denton cases, mm -hmm. those two cases that were your significant ones, um, in each of those, um, did the city lose? 
Well, the for Denton, we don't know yet. That's the argument I had yesterday. I'm hoping not. Um, but we were the appellant in that case, so we didn't lose in the circuit court. Um, in the Albany's case, again, I hope not. It's still, it's still pending in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, but we did lose in the district court. We're also the appellant in that case. And in, in the, um, um, the other case that you cite is USA versus City of Jacksonville, mm -hmm. that was um, the Department of Justice one. Mm -hmm. Were you lead counsel in that? I know you had help. Really, lead counsel was the general counsel, which at the time was Cindy Lackey uh -huh. Bear. She has since left, but um, it's you know that case yeah. is probably arguably the most significant case we have right now. When the federal government is usually tends to be pretty significant, so yeah. the, I, I would say that the general counsel is lead. But I've been significantly involved in that since it first came in, and, and there's we've got several cases involving alleged claims of discrimination within the fire department in the city of Jacksonville. That's just one of probably three or four right now that I've. So is she, didn't she leave? She did leave. Uh-huh. Yeah. So she's, she's, she left and then city council made the decision, at least for now, to sort of hire as outside council. Oh, I see. So she's leave. remaining on that case. She is, but she's been so intimately involved with it. about um, what you bring to the bench as far as being coming from the outside as a lawyer as opposed to being a judge? Sure. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I think it's, it's obvious and it's understandable that, that one of the hardest things to read if somebody is coming from the outside as opposed to being a judge is exactly how would they, how, what kind of judge would they make. Um, I think I've been fortunate enough to have a varied enough legal career and a varied enough appellate practice that I can bring a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different knowledge that I've learned, one, from judges and appellate judges themselves, um, but also from you know, very high level appellate litigators, including in Washington, D.C. When I, when I went up there and worked um, and, and got to see the Supreme Court in action and got to see a lot of the top national lawyers in action at that court as well. So I just think I bring a lot of different perspectives um, to, to how you know, law should be applied to facts and cases should be decided. Um, okay, you have five. Can I ask one oh, question? Go ahead. Sorry, sure. is there anything negative in your past that would reflect negatively or poorly upon the position of being a judge? I don't believe so. How about a DUI in Michigan? Well, you know, I suppose people make mistakes. Um, that was a um, nothing particularly um, outrageous about it. It was a you know dinner with wine kind of DUI, and you know I lived through it and haven't had that since. So um, you don't have a drinking problem. You uh, never went through rehabilitation or anything like that. No. But. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, very good about the GNC for having me down here. It's been a pleasure. Um, I, I just want to say that I think that, as I've said before, I think all roads have really led me here. This, this is, in fact, where I want my career to, to be until I retire, or until the legislature says I have to retire. Um, I, I think that my, my resume and my background speaks for itself, but I, I, I can tell you that, you know, I, I somebody that would bring the, the highest level of passion, um, intellect, interest, collegiality to, to the bench. And you know, I'm just at this stage of my career where I'm, I think I would just be absolutely perfectly well suited for something like this. And, and this, this, is, this is what I want for my future and my family's future as well. So again, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.